So everybody's been hyping up Face Fusion and I could totally see why. Let's start with the installation. To do the installation, we're going to use the Pinocchio installer. If you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link in the description below. Super easy to install and it manages all your AI installations and it makes it super easy. Now, once you've installed it and you're on the home page of Pinocchio, you can just search for Face Fusion. We see it right here. We're going to click on it and we're simply going to hit download. Let's save it as Face Fusion. Click download once again. And then a new window is going to pop up. We're just going to select the Face Fusion icon there. And then on the left panel here, we're going to click on install. Like anything else, this is going to take a few minutes. So just be patient and let it do its thing. Once installation is complete, you'll get this notification. Just click on done. We want to head back to the left panel here. You could click on update. It should be up to date since it's your first installation, but keep that in mind for the future. And we just have to select launch default. Now it's going to download some dependencies. So this should take another few minutes. All right, once everything is downloaded, you'll see the URL here. You can either click it or click on open session and you'll get this interface. Now I like to pop it out so that it's actually on my web browser here. So let's start with a face swap for an image. You just have to click on the source area here and then I'm going to select my ugly mug there without glasses. <laughs> this was quite a few years ago. And then our target image we're going to input in here. I'm going to select the Superman image and you'll see on the right side, we already have a preview. Now you can see it's got my face. This is probably the only face swapper that I've used that actually can do my face pretty well, but you see that it's low resolution. So under this area here, you want to select face enhancer. By the way, I am running this on a 3060 Ti, eight gigabytes of VRAM. So that took a few seconds to do. And we see now the preview is much nicer. Now on the left side here, we can and choose the face swapper model. It's already on in swapper 128 FP 16. This is the best one that I find that works pretty well. Like if we use the SIM swap one, but I find the face swapping isn't as accurate. So yeah, it starts to look very different and making me look pretty cross-eyed to be honest. I like to use InSwapper. It's the same one that I believe was in Roop and some of the other popular face swappers. The other thing you want to make sure is that if you're on an NVIDIA card, you want to select CUDA so that it generates faster. The Tensor RT is for if you're on a Mac platform. We're going to unselect CPU there. The face enhancer blend option here, I typically leave it at 80. It's a good default setting. Here in your output path, you can change that to whichever folder that you want. And the output image quality, I can crank this to 100 just so we get higher quality. Now, the other thing that's interesting here is the face selector mode. If you had multiple people, you can actually reference one person or many, which works very well. And to be honest, I haven't had to fool around with much of the default settings, except for the face padding for video, which we'll look at in a second. So I'm going to go ahead here and just click start. And you see now we have our final output. If I right click and open that up, a Superman never looked so good. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, this is the best face swapper that can actually do my likeness. Now I'm going to play with this a lot more and show you a few more things when it comes to images, but I wanted to show you the video as well. Let's remove our source and target image and I'm going to swap in this image. This is an AI generated image. Now I've dropped a 10 second video clip in here. Let me play it for you. Now pay attention to how her face looks. This is Kea, by the way. And if we look at the preview here, you see that other than the skin tone, the face looks very much like her, right? Now, once you're ready to go, all you need to do is click start and then the video is going to be generated. Now here's the generated video. So if you look at the face, it looks like the AI generated one. But on the right side of her cheek here, you see that we have a little bit of issues happening there, right? So what we can do here is that you see a little of it here. If we preview the frame, we need to find where it's more prominent. There you go. There's a bit of white showing here on her cheek. 
And as I said earlier, we can play with the padding here. So face mask padding left. Let's bring that up to, let's try 20. Nope, still there. So it seems to have disappeared using face padding of 40. So we'll go ahead and generate it once again and see if that helps. So that took roughly about a minute and a half to generate, which isn't too long for my card. So let's take a look at the video. Yeah, no more issues on the cheek there. Looks very clean and seamless and it does a really good job. We'll put them side by side so that you can see the differences from before to after. Now, all I have to say with Face Fusion is please be responsible when you're using this. If you want to do questionable things, it does have a safeguard on it. I'm sure there's hacks around it, but I don't encourage it. As always, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you're currently using Face Fusion, I'd love to hear your thoughts. In the meantime, if you want to use something that's a little easier, try Focus's Face Swapper in this video right here. Till the next one, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.